today on Tidbits of History. Poncho Barnes, a daring aviator of the 20th century, defied convention, broke records, and left an indelible mark on aviation history. This is her extraordinary journey. In the vast expanse 100 miles north of Los Angeles, California, near the western fringe of the Mojave Desert, you'll find Edwards Air Force Base. This strategic base served as the testing ground for the Bell X-1 airplane that propelled Captain Chuck Yeager through the sound barrier in 1947. The North American rocket-powered X-15 aircraft in the 1960s. Numerous space shuttle landings, and, most recently, the X-47B, an unmanned combat aerial vehicle designed for carrier-based operations. Founded in 1933 as the Muroc Lake Bombing and Gunnery Range, the base had humble beginnings. Post-World War II, with the introduction of jet aircraft into military service, rapid expansion transformed the airbase to facilitate increasingly sophisticated planes and flight tests. At the heart of the current airbase lies the remnants of a business that once served some of America's most renowned military and civilian pilots during the burgeoning jet age. The business was called the Rancho Oro Verde Fly in Dude Ranch, and later as the Happy Bottom Riding Club. The owner of the ranch was a tough as iron woman known as Poncho Barnes. Barnes was born in Pasadena, California, with the stately name of Florence Leontine Lowe on July 22, 1901. Thaddeus Lowe, Florence's grandfather, had achieved fame as chief aeronaut of the Union Army's Balloon Corps during the American Civil War. Long after the Civil War, in retirement, Lowe was a chief builder of the Mount Lowe Railway north of Altadena, California. Florence grew up in her grandfather's 32-room mansion and attended the finest private schools in Southern California. Florence's introduction to flight came on January, 1910, when Grandfather Lowe took Florence to Dominguez Field near Los Angeles. This event was the first international air meet in the United States. Since her early years, Florence's father fostered a love for outdoor pursuits, urging her to partake in activities like riding, camping, and hunting. In her youth, she even enjoyed horseback riding with a neighbor named George, who later achieved fame as America's foremost tank commander in World War II, General George S. Patton. Florence, a spirited and rebellious young woman, found herself enrolled in a succession of ever more stringent academies, boarding schools, and convents. When these attempts to temper her independence proved futile, her parents orchestrated her marriage at the age of 19 to the reserved Episcopalian minister, Rev. C. Rankin Barnes. After nine and a half months, she gave birth to a son. In the following years, Florence became discontent as a minister's wife, leading to a strained marriage. They separated and lived mostly separate lives until their eventual divorce in 1941. In 1928, Florence, always seeking adventure, disguised herself as a man, boarded a banana boat set for South America. Soon after pulling away from the dock, the crew discovered that instead of transporting legal goods, they were smuggling guns and ammunition to the revolutionaries fighting in Mexico. Upon reaching their destination, the boat was boarded by armed guards, and the crew was held hostage for six weeks. Never one to play it safe, Florence and Roger shoot, the ship's helmsman, were the only two to escape after stealing a horse and a barrow and riding for their lives. It was during their journey back to California that Roger comments, she looked like Poncho. Mistakenly referencing Don Quixote's squire Sancho Panza. When Florence tried to correct him, Roger replied that he liked Poncho better anyway, and Florence agreed, so the name stuck. Shortly after returning, Poncho, decided she wanted to learn to fly. She started taking flight lessons from a World War I pilot, in an airplane that would give the modern-day FAA a heart attack. There was only one instrument, an oil gauge, and their artificial horizon was a keychain hung from the control panel. They looked out the sides to gauge altitude and tipped a string in the fuel tank to estimate how long they could fly. Naturally, Poncho fell in love. After only six hours of instruction, Poncho soloed. She immediately went out and bought herself a travel air biplane for $5,500. She then quickly jumped into exhibition flying, such as barnstorming, and air races. In 1929, she crashed into a truck on the runway at the Women's Air Derby, but returned the following year, sponsored by Union Oil, to win the race. Flying in a travel air type a mystery ship, 
a low-wing racing plane with a top speed of 235 miles per hour, Poncho broke Amelia Earhart's women's world speed record in that same race by maintaining an average speed of 196.19 miles per hour. Soon, Hollywood would come calling. Poncho, provided authentic airplane sounds for Howard Hughes on his landmark movie Hell's Angels, by flying past sound equipment tethered to balloons. This was one among several 1930s air adventure films she did aerial work for. In 1931, Poncho started the Associated Motion Picture Pilots, Hollywood's first union created to protect industry stunt pilots, promote flying safety, and standardized pay for aerial stunt work. Over the next couple of years, Poncho worked with other female aviators to organize the Women's Air Reserve. The goals, in addition to proving women could help serve their country just as well as men, included the hope that the success of the organization would lead to equal flying qualifications for aviatrixes, and encourage more women to pursue aviation. Despite the fact she was constantly working, her lavish parties and Emmons' generosity helping out friends, the Great Depression eventually ate up what little fortune she had left from her mother's passing some ten years earlier. In 1935, she was forced to sell the San Marino estate, and traded her LA apartment building for a four-room house, situated on an 80-acre alfalfa ranch, near Muroc Lake Bombing and Gunnery Range. Not long after acquiring the ranch, Poncho, strapped for cash, had to part with her beloved travel air mystery ship. She used the money, to pay off creditors, and purchased some cows and hogs. Before long she was turning a profit by supplying the base with meat and milk. By 1939, President Roosevelt, asked Congress to allot $500 million in response to Germany's aggression in Europe, for the civilian pilot training program. Poncho, secured a contract and began training that winter. By 1941, she could afford to improve her resort even more and added amenities such as a swimming pool, air conditioning, a motel, two airstrips, and a hangar. By 1945 the war ended, and the U.S. government lifted the ban on civilian flying. Poncho's fly-in ranch quickly flourished. Besides hosting pilots and military brass from the base, the ranch became a destination point for many of Hollywood's elite. That same year her good friend General Jimmy Doolittle came out to visit. One evening while returning from a horseback ride on the ranch, Poncho asked if he had a good ride, to which he replied, it gave me a happy bottom. Poncho pleased by his reply, quickly named her bar and grill, the Happy Bottom Riding Club. To try to put a handle on ever more visitors coming to the ranch, she decided to make her bar and grill a private club, personally interviewing and issuing membership cards. Poncho hired beautiful young women as hostesses to cater to her special guests. At its peak, the Happy Bottom Riding Club had 9,000 card-carrying members. When Chuck Yeager came out to Muroc in 1947, scores of new planes were being tested every month. When he met Poncho, at first he didn't know what to make of her. He thought she was the ugliest woman he had ever seen, but was immediately taken by her stories and knowledge of aircraft. She had the foulest mouth he'd ever heard, but yet she was also a charming and engaging hostess. Poncho's bar quickly became the war room for the hottest fighter jocks in the Air Corps. Alongside engineers, and military brass, they would debrief the day's events, and problem-solve technical issues. The night before breaking the sound barrier, Chuck, and his wife Glennis went to Poncho's for dinner. Later that evening, they decided to go out for a horseback ride. Racing back to the ranch, unbeknownst to Chuck, someone had closed the gate, and he ran into it breaking two ribs. On October 14, 1947, Chuck Yeager became the first man to fly faster than the speed of sound. That evening, Chuck, Bob Hoover, engineer extraordinaire Jack Ridley, B-29 pilot Bob Cardenas, and the rest of the X-1 team, congregated at Poncho's to celebrate their triumph. Chuck and his fellow aviators served as the driving force behind Poncho's in the late 1940s and early 1950s. This achievement wouldn't have been possible without the crucial endorsement from General Al Boyd, a close friend. In December 1949, New Rock, was renamed Edwards Air Force Base, in honor of Captain Glenn W. Edwards, who was killed a year earlier in the crash of the YB-49 Flying Wing. In 1952, Poncho married Eugene Mac McKendry. Al Boyd was selected to give away the bride, and Chuck Yeager served as best man. 
The wedding attracted 650 guests. The Los Angeles Herald Examiner called it, one of the most flamboyant weddings in the state's history. Their honeymoon wouldn't last for long. Later that same year, General Al Boyd was transferred to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. A new commanding officer was assigned to take his place, Brigadier General Stanley J. Holtoner, was strictly military. Holtoner despised Poncho, referring to her as the base garbage collector. He considered Poncho's club a vulgar nuisance, and a house of ill repute. Holtoner, deemed her establishment off-limits. With flight test activities increasing, and the Cold War in full swing, some military brass decided it was time to purchase more land to expand the base. There were rumors of putting in a very large runway to accommodate atomic-powered aircraft, and Poncho's property was right in the way. The government gave her an offer of $205,000 for the property. Dissatisfied with the offer, she filed a lawsuit against the United States Air Force. During the height of the intense court battle, in 1953, her ranch burned in a fire of mysterious origin. Nonetheless, the court battle continued. A main contention of her case was, my grandfather founded the United States Air Force. On that argument, the court found in her favor and she was awarded $414,500 remuneration for her property and business. She gave up possession of the property in 1954. That same year Poncho purchased properties near Cantil. First, the Gypsy Springs Ranch was 485 acres of undeveloped land with an artesian well, and a crumbling stone house that had once been a stagecoach stop. Next, the Jawbone Cafe and Motel, along with 640 acres. Her dream was Gypsy Springs would be the Happy Bottom Riding Club and Poncho's Fly-In, reincarnated, made bigger, showier, even more extravagant. By 1960, Gypsy Springs was ready to accept guests. Poncho put in a 8,000-foot runway, renovated the house, and added amenities such as running water and electricity. Sadly the ranch never gained popularity, and only saw a handful of guests a year. In 1962, health challenges, and the burden of divorce converged on Poncho. Life was becoming increasingly more difficult on the ranch. In 1964, a decade after the profound loss and prolonged legal battles with the government, Poncho received an invitation to return to Edwards Air Force Base and was honored as its inaugural citizen. She was also affectionately and respectfully referred to as the mother, of Edwards Air Force Base. By 1966, burdened by debts, Poncho, sold her properties to pay off creditors. She moved into a 20 by 25 foot stone house owned by a friend in the town of Boron. In 1968, the movie Land of the Air Museum, auctioned off its cherished antique aircraft collection. Billy Barnes, alongside his mother Poncho, attended the event. The highlight of the auction was Poncho Barnes Traveler, R613K mystery ship. When bidders recognized the famed aviatrix, they dropped their paddles, and Billy's winning bid of $4,300 secured the plane back for his mother. Throughout the 1970s, Poncho was often invited out to Edwards. Poncho became a popular banquet speaker. Spinning yarns of the good old days of aviation, and telling, off-color jokes, to appreciative audiences. In the spring of 1975, Poncho Barnes passed away. The discovery came when she missed a speaking engagement at the annual Barnstormers reunion on April 5th. Concerns grew after a friend's unsuccessful phone call on March 30th. Days later, her son found her lifeless in a neglected home, surrounded by filth and animal waste. Breast cancer likely marked the quiet end to her remarkable life. As the winds whisper through the remains of the California Desert Ranch, the enduring stone chimney stands tall at Edwards Air Force Base. A silent testament Barnes's indomitable spirit. Her legacy, etched in the annals of aviation history, continues to soar through the skies, a tribute to a woman who defied boundaries, and left an everlasting mark on the wings of time. Perhaps the best way to summarize her life, is to use her own words.